I'm from Bayou Lafourche, and this is my series dedicated to preserving Cajun culture. This is Cajun Stories. Bonjour, je m'appelle uh, Nery Cherami, je reste à Galéon, uh, j'ai été né et élevé à Golden Mare, dans le sud, sud de la paroisse de Lafourche, dans l'état de la Louisiane, dans les États-Unis. Translated in English, that means, hello, uh, my name is Nettie Sheremy. I live in Galeana, Louisiana. I was uh, I was born and raised in Golden Meadow, Louisiana, and I am from the southern part of Lafourche Parish in Louisiana, the state of Louisiana, and the United States of America. Both my parents uh, were married before. When I was born, they were both in their 40s. Both had children from previous marriages. My mother was a widow and had uh, four children uh, with her first husband who, and he died uh, in his late 30s uh, so she was a widow at a relatively young age however uh, she was uh, 41 years old when when i was born so uh, literally i was raised not by my grandparents but by grandparents both of them came from large families uh, my my father was uh, one of 10 my mother was one of 13 my grandfather had never had a, a job to, say, to, to speak of. They, they, they were self-sufficient. They grew their own food. They grew, uh, they, they had uh, the green beans and okra and uh, uh, potatoes and uh, peanuts. And they had fruit trees. They had uh, persimmon trees, apple trees, pomegranates, uh, plums. Uh, 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 they had... Uh, the corn, they grew corn, and not to sell to anybody, but to sustain themselves. Uh, furthermore, they, they, they shrimp, and they fished, and they, uh, they threw cast nets in, in the bayou or in the, you know, the lakes and so forth. And they, they, they had uh, access to all of the, the fisheries. Uh, they, they fished oysters, they, they caught crabs. So, so they had a, an abundance of, uh, of food. Uh, available to them. My grandfather and his sons, particularly the older ones, my daddy was one of those, were professional hunters. Now you would say, uh, that's kind of odd. They were professional hunters. What do you mean? Well, they were professional duck hunters. They would kill hundreds and hundreds of ducks and they would uh, prepare them. They would bring them home the the girls and the ladies in the family and everybody would pitch in they 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 prepare the ducks clean them and pluck them and 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 prepare them and they would uh ice them down and put them on boats that that uh, merchants would come and buy them and they would bring them to new orleans and sell them in the french market really yes and uh they they were fur trappers they caught uh uh, they, they trapped the uh, muskrat and otter and mink, raccoons, and they sold the pelts, the, the skins. My daddy, I told you uh, earlier, uh, was not uh, was just a laborer. He was not a, a, a skilled man, but uh, maybe I should take that back. He was very skilled. He could skin a muskrat faster than a, than a, than a blink of an eye. Uh, and you would say, wow, <laughs> of what value is that? Well, if you had a hundred rat a trap uh, muskrats that you caught during the day you had to skin them and prepare them and put them on moles and set them up so they could draw so you could you could sell your pelts uh, and and that's how you made a living so that was so interesting and uh, but the sad story is that none of that was ever recorded with my family in particular I'm sure there were maybe a uh, uh, pictures and photographs of, of various people doing these things but my family there was there's no there's no family picture of my father and his brothers and his parents they just didn't have that and it's so sad that they're all it's all gone and 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 that's why I'm telling you about this because it lives on in my memory having been told to me so I bet you uh, none of my grandchildren or my children even knew that this happened, occurred. And this is their ancestry, their, their own flesh and blood, their, their, their grandparents, their uh, uh, great-grandparents, their aunts and great-uncles and so forth. That's how they lived. So uh, 
that was a unique time in history, I find, and I'm I'm very proud of that. They would go to the trapping grounds, and they would uh, uh, they, they didn't have motorized vessels, so they would paddle their pirogues, and they would bring whatever supplies they needed with them to live uh, for weeks at a time in the marsh. They would build palmetto camps and huts that they would live in, and uh, they would uh, build the uh, fires and cook their own food and so forth. Uh, they would hunt. Palmetto is a is a, a, a marsh plant. A palmetto, it's a, a, like a palm tree of sorts. Yeah, that's what people would know. Yes, and uh, and uh, they would uh, cut uh, limbs from uh, small uh, scrub oaks and so forth. And they would make uh, small camps that they would live in, and so uh, they had. Uh, the, the, the trapping season had closed and uh, they kept on trapping. Uh, there wasn't much law uh, back then and, and it wasn't a very serious offense to continue to trap well, after the season was closed back then. Uh, and so uh, the reason why I'm bringing out uh, the, the fact that it was after the season was because it was late in the year in the spring and uh, it was uh, around the time of the holidays. Uh, uh, Good Friday and uh, Easter Sunday, and so they had planned to paddle back to to the bayou from the marsh uh, back home to to spend the Easter holiday weekend with the family. So uh, when they when they showed up, they finally got there. Uh, they had been gone about a month. And they lost track of the days. So it it, it was Monday. <laughs> It was the day after Easter Sunday. They thought it was Friday, Good Friday, so they only missed it by three days. So, <laughs> when you say that they built like little huts, that's hard for me to imagine. That the dad and his brothers would literally go out to the marsh, I'm assuming. And just yes. Go. Were they ever attacked by like? Were they scared of alligators? Or no. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of snakes uh, then. I, when I was coming up before their levee system and was before the, uh, the the last twenty years of uh, horrendous uh, uh, or thirty years of uh, of, uh, of big hurricanes, kind of destroying the marsh and the uh, so forth. Yeah, they there were a lot of uh, uh, water moccasins, copperheads. Uh, there wasn't any rattlesnakes because it was marsh. But okay. uh, alligators are not that dangerous. Uh, they 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 won't they don't attack people. No, they're more scared about. Yeah, that, so so that 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 wasn't a, a fact. As a matter of fact, they hunted alligators too. Yeah. <laughs> they like to see an alligator and they kill them <laughs> and sell the pelt. Was that normal back then? Yes, that was. Uh, well, uh, uh, yeah. Now you ha you have to realize that this was in. Uh, uh, the the early part of, uh, of the 20th century. This was about uh, 1920 or somewhere around there, uh, 1925 somewhere. I mean, you're talking about 100 years ago. So it wasn't yesterday. This was a long time ago. Now, in particular, uh, uh, my daddy was a trapper even uh, uh, when I was uh, growing up. Matter of fact, I used to go with him, uh, uh, and and they lived in more modern camps uh, and and they had boats uh, motor boats so to get back and forth to the marsh but uh, I, I remember going to the uh, uh, at the end of our street there was a, 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 a one of my dad's cousin was a, a merchant he had a grocery store uh, a, a, a day bar a saloon we'd call him and uh, he also uh, uh, bought uh, uh, pelts uh, animal skins, animal pelts from the trappers, and the trappers would uh, bring. Uh, they would all get together on a certain day, and he would buy out the pelts from the trappers. And then there was a big truck that was here, and they would load the pelts and bring them to the factories that would process them. But anyway, it was it was so much fun because it was like a party, and everybody would get together, and uh, 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 my daddy would bring his four or five sacks. And when I say sacks, they were big burlap sacks, and they'd stuff the muskrat skins or the uh, the uh, mink skins or otters or whatever, and then the, uh, they they would sort them out. And uh, 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 my cousin Amy Sheremy, who was uh, the buyer, 
and he would take the sack and they'd have they'd dump them and they had a pile of skin now the smell was not very good but anyway and then they'd sort them they, uh, different sizes like the small ones the mediums and the large and then the small ones were 25 cents and uh, the mediums were a dollar and the larger were a dollar fifty so and then he'd stack them and count them and they did tally it up and then when it was all said and done he pulled out a wad of uh, bills about this big and he'd sort out uh, well my dad would get uh, five hundred dollars for his belt now you have to realize this was two months of work so uh, what do you think five hundred dollars back then would be now probably thousands five <laughs> to ten thousand dollars today so he was doing pretty well for himself well it said. was a it was a it was a, a a means of making a living and uh, you didn't get rich but you were able to uh, to uh, sustain yourself and raise a family and so forth can you eat any of that stuff like uh, uh yeah you could eat muskrat it, but uh, it, it's a it's a beautiful red meat but it's, uh, I mean, it's not, it's not everybody's yeah. favorite choice, you know. But, yeah, you could eat them. Speaking of food. Once, raccoons, you could eat raccoons. Speaking of uh, food, one time we were at a restaurant and I ordered snail. I ordered escargot. And I thought, I've actually told a lot of people this because I think it's really interesting. That, you know, some people are like put off by that or they think it's like something that's fancy that people eat but you used to eat snails as a little boy right no i never did oh. eat snails i don't like them but uh your, your grandmother my, my wife loves them uh as a matter of fact uh, i can remember she and her dad would uh would cook them and uh the favorite way of cooking them was in a pressure cooker uh they would uh just wash them out real good get kind of the sand off of the the conch shell and they would put them in a big pressure cooker with with some water and seasonings and so forth and they'd, they'd boil them essentially is what they would do and what would happen uh the the the, the, the flesh the meat the snail inside the shell was boiled and cooked and and you would fish them out with a you take a, a fork before a fork and you'd bend uh -huh. one of the prongs and then they'd use the fork to, to just pull it out and then you had this long string of snail meat and uh, uh where did they get the snails from uh in the water uh, mostly off the oyster bed snails uh that the kind that we eat here the big on nose that as they're called uh are a menace actually they they, they destroy the oysters really? yes they destroy uh they, they they kill and eat the oysters uh they, they the, the oysters die so uh, 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 the oyster uh, uh, harvesters, uh, they, they hate, they hate the, uh, what do you call it? The big our nose. Big our nose. Yes. Cool. So I guess you, I guess what I was trying to say is that you basically were like, yeah, it's not fancy. We used to just pick them up or you could just pick them up off the, you know, off the dirt. No, you would get them out of the water. Of the, the ones water. here are, are, are from the water. Um, I'll catch them in my trolls. From, uh, uh, they me so. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Lauren, for interviewing me. I really appreciated the opportunity to be able to share some of the things from my heart, uh, from my uh, childhood and my background and uh, my family. It really means a lot to me that we can preserve uh, some of these uh, things that, uh, that I, I know uh, about my family that nobody else knows or that would never come to light other than my being able to share it with you like I just did. Thank Thanks. you so much. I appreciate it very much. I love you. I love you too.